Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into something that could be a game changer for your business, uh, especially if you're thinking about investing in new equipment. We're talking about the Section 179 tax deduction. And to make this even more interesting, oh, yeah. we're looking at it through the lens of information from Bayshore Ford truck sales. Which is great. So we'll get a real practical look at how this deduction plays out in the real world. Exactly. So imagine this. You're a business owner and you need to purchase a new piece of equipment. New truck. Right. And it's a big purchase, maybe like $50,000. Now, normally you would deduct a little bit of that cost each year as the equipment loses value you know, through depreciation. But with Section 179, you might be able to deduct the entire cost up front, like all $50,000 in one go. That's huge. That's got to be a big boost for your cash flow, right? Absolutely. It's a huge incentive from the government. Like they're practically begging you to invest. Exactly. They want businesses to grow, to be more productive. So it seems like a no-brainer. Why wouldn't every business use this? Well, there are some things to consider. For one, there's a spending cap. For 2024, it's $3,050,000. So once you hit that limit? The deduction starts to phase out. It's not like you suddenly lose it all, right? No, no, it's gradual. But it's something to keep in mind, especially for those bigger investments. And then, of course, you can't deduct more than your taxable income. So even though the deduction limit for 2024 is over a million dollars, if your business only makes, say, 100000 in profit, you can only deduct up to that 100000 Exactly. And that's where things get interesting because then you have to factor in other deductions like bonus depreciation. So it's not as simple as just like checking a box on your tax forms. There's some real strategy involved here. 100%. Uh. For example, let's say you've maxed out your Section 179 deduction for the year. Okay. This is where bonus depreciation comes in. In 2024, it allows you to deduct an additional 60% of the cost of qualifying equipment. So you can potentially combine both deductions. Exactly. And what's even more interesting is that bonus depreciation used to apply only to brand new equipment. Oh, really? So yeah. used equipment wasn't eligible? Not in the past, but now it is, which can be a game changer for so many businesses. It's like getting a two-for-one deal on tax savings. <laughs> Let's say that. It's all about maximizing those benefits. So we've talked about spending caps and bonus depreciation, but what exactly qualifies for Section 179? Is it just like heavy machinery and factory equipment? Actually, it's a surprisingly broad range of things. Our friends at the dealership mentioned vehicles to software. It just goes to show that the government really is trying to encourage investment across different sectors. But there are some catches, right? Like with vehicles, there are limits on the size and how you use them. Yes, there's the more than 50% business use rule. If you're using the equipment for both business and personal reasons. So no writing off that fancy sports car just because you drive it to work sometimes. <sighs> yeah. Laughing. Afraid not. The lines can get a little blurry sometimes, which is why it's always best to consult with a tax professional, especially for those larger deductions. Speaking of real-world examples, Bayshore Ford had this fascinating case study about a landscaping business owner. Oh, yes. They were trying to decide between buying a new work truck outright or leasing it. Mm -hmm. A classic dilemma. What's the verdict? What makes more sense in this case? Well, in the past, leasing often made more sense tax-wise. You could deduct those lease payments as a business expense. Right, right. But with Section 179, buying outright becomes really attractive. You might be able to write off a big chunk, maybe even the whole purchase price in that first year. So you're basically front-loading the deduction, which could be huge for your cash flow early on. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where that strategic planning comes in. You got the time those purchases right, maximize that deduction, and make sure it all fits your overall business goals. Okay, so we've talked about the spending cap, the types of equipment that qualify, even how this all ties into leasing versus buying. But there's this other piece of the puzzle, the carry-forward concept. You mentioned it briefly before. What does it mean to carry forward a loss? So let's say your business has a rough year and experiences a loss. Meaning you spent more than you brought in. Right. In this situation, you might not be able to fully utilize Section 179 because there's not enough taxable income to offset. So you're kind of leaving that deduction on the table unused. In a way, yes. But that's where the carry forward provision comes in. You don't lose that deduction completely. Instead, you can carry it forward to future years and use it to offset profits down the line, which reduces your tax burden later on. So it's like a tax credit, but for future use. Exactly. A lifesaver for businesses with fluctuating income or those just starting out. Adds another layer of flexibility and long-term planning to the whole thing. 
Absolutely. And it shows how understanding Section 179 goes beyond just reducing your tax bill for a single year. It can shape your entire business strategy and investment decisions. It's about turning the tax code into a tool for growth and success. Exactly. It's about working smarter, not harder. Love it. Now, while our deep dive is super helpful, we do have to stress the importance of talking to the professionals. 100%. A qualified tax advisor is crucial. They can give you advice tailored to your specific situation, help you navigate those tricky parts, and most importantly, make sure you're playing by the IRS's rules. They can also keep you updated on any changes in those tax laws, and we all know how often those can change. Way too often. But that's a topic for another deep dive. Absolutely. Speaking of deep dives, there's one more fascinating aspect of Section 179 I think we should explore. It's history. Oh, a history lesson. I'm all ears. How has this deduction changed over time? You might be surprised to learn that Section 179 has been around for a while, but it's undergone major revisions over the years, often to keep up with the changing needs of the economy. Really? What kind of revisions? Give me an example. Well, remember that SUV tax loophole we touched on? How could I forget? It seemed like everyone was writing off luxury SUVs back then. Well, that was actually an unintended consequence of an earlier version of Section 179. You're kidding. How did that happen? In the early 2000s, after that dot-com bubble burst, they wanted to stimulate the economy. One way they did this was by increasing the Section 179 deduction limits, especially for vehicles. And I'm guessing there weren't many restrictions on what kind of vehicles back then. Exactly. Yeah. They wanted businesses to upgrade their fleets, give the auto industry a boost. But of course, people found ways to take advantage. They started writing off those fancy SUVs, even if they were mainly for personal use. And bam, the SUV tax loophole was born. Pretty much. It became a big deal, and eventually Congress had to step in and change the rules. Hence the weight limits and those stricter business use rules. Exactly. It shows that Section 179 is dynamic. It changes with the economy. As new opportunities and challenges pop up, we can expect to see more changes to this deduction in the future. That makes sense. It's about finding the right balance, encouraging investment, making sure the deduction is being used for its intended purpose. Precisely. It's a balancing act, for sure. And that's why staying up to date on those rules and regulations is so important. Well said. And on that note, I think we've covered a ton of ground today in our deep dive into Section 179. We talked about how Section 179 works, what those limits are, and even how it's changed over time. It's been quite the journey. It has. But hey, that's what makes these deep dives so interesting. So to wrap things up, for our listeners out there, what's the one big takeaway you want them to remember about Section 179? Don't miss out on this opportunity. Section 179 is a powerful tool for businesses to potentially deduct the full cost of qualifying equipment up front. But you have to be proactive. Do your research, talk to the experts, and make smart decisions that will benefit your business for years to come. Couldn't have said it better myself. Knowledge is power, my friends, especially when it comes to navigating the complex world of taxes. Absolutely. And remember, tax laws are constantly changing. What's true today might be outdated tomorrow, so make sure you're staying informed. Well said. So to quickly recap our deep dive into Section 179, we learned that it can be a real game changer for businesses looking to invest in growth by potentially allowing them to deduct the full cost of qualifying equipment up front. We dug into those limitations like the spending cap and those business use requirements. And of course, we couldn't forget about bonus depreciation and how it all fits together. We also dove into those historical changes to Section 179, seeing how it's evolved to meet the needs of the economy and how those changes have shaped what it is today. And as always, we emphasize how crucial it is to loop in those professionals a qualified tax advisor can provide personalized advice that's tailored to your specific business needs. Because at the end of the day, it's all about maximizing those tax benefits while staying on the right side of the IRS. Couldn't agree more. Well, folks, that wraps up our deep dive into Section 179. We hope you found this exploration insightful and maybe even a little bit fun. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and we'll catch you on our next deep dive.